JW Player is part of the Works with Wowza partner program, and we work together to provide robust and reliable streaming to any device anywhere. Our audiences and viewers can access high quality video and audio on any device thanks to full compatibility between Wowza Streaming Engine and JW, and you can easily stream both live and video on demand content from Wowza Streaming Engine to JW Player, either directly or using a CDN. In today's demo, we're actually going to walk through how to pull in a live stream from an encoder, be able to pull that into Wowza Streaming Engine, and then we're going to enable the transcoder to create adaptive bitrate renditions, and then also enable the DVR functionality, or digital video recorder functionality, and then use the ABR renditions and the DVR and send that stream to the player that can then use those features to actually deliver that to, uh, for, play for playback. So for more information and code examples, you can reference Article 484 in our support forum. And in here, we have several examples of how to get up a simple RTMP example, HLS streaming. You can even do RTMP dynamic streaming or Apple HLS adaptive bit, bit rate streaming, which is what we're going to do in our example. And then you can do other features like secure token to add security as well. And like you can see here, the first thing we can do is sign into our JW Player account. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go over to JW Player. Uh, dot com. In here you can click on get started and sign up for an account. Now I've already done that and I've signed into my existing account. And in here you can see you can see your different content options, your player options. And what I've done is actually created a player that we use here at Wowza. So if I actually scroll through I have a bu bunch of different players here. Here I've created um, wowza.com three player and in here you can see features such as Chromecast, you can do adaptive bitrate with multiple renditions, you can see he has DVR functionalities, playlist functionalities, all that and I've gone ahead and configured that and created that and for more information on how to do that, how to skin that, you can go to JW Player directly but I've done that and then we're going to use this um, particular player example um, on our website and to be able to reference this JavaScript you can actually grab the player library URL in here so if you actually open this up you can now copy this JavaScript and then you can um, reference that inside of your HTML code to actually use this particular player example and I'm going to show how to do that in just a second. So now that I've created my player and I have signed up for an account on JW, now all I need to do is get a live stream up and running with Wowza Streaming Engine. So what you can do is you can go to wowza.com and sign up for a free trial and get a 180 day free trial license for Wowza Streaming Engine. But what I've done is I've actually already got a version of Wowza up and running. You can download this and install this on your own local server. Or in this example, I actually have this particular server running up on Amazon Web Services, which is one of our Works with Wowza cloud partners. And you can see I've used a trial license for this particular demo. And you can see how many days I have left here. So here I can see some usage information, some connection information. And what you'll notice is that with this test license, uh, or this trial license, I actually have Transcoder, DRM, and DVR all licensed. So I can actually use these features inside of this particular instance. So what I'm going to do is actually go into my applications and go into Live Application. And what I need to do is first get a live stream up and running here. So I'm going to click on Live Sources. And for today's demo, I'm actually going to use Telestream Wirecast. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go ahead and download this XML configuration file. <clears throat> you can see that downloads. And now I can actually pull up Wirecast and be able to configure this um, live stream. So now that I've got Wirecast up and running, I'm going to go ahead and pull in the output settings. And in here, I'm going to choose Wowza Streaming Engine. So here I have Wowza Streaming Engine. I'm going to import that Wowza configuration file I just downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and type in my credentials. And what I can do here, you can see this is just my stream is the name of the stream. I'm going to keep that as a generic name. Uh, and then you can see I'm sending this at 1080p at, for this demo, just at 2.5 megabits per second. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to hit the stream button. So now I'm streaming this live stream of this live soccer game, this football match, um, into Wowza Streaming Engine. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over there. And if I come into my incoming streams, so now you can see the stream coming into Wowza Streaming Engine. Now what I want to do is I actually, I'm pulling in one high quality stream at 1080p. I now want to transcode this to multiple um, renditions so I can then deliver that adaptive bitrate, those adaptive bitrate streams to JW Player and JW can serve that up. So I'm going to go ahead and enable my transcoder. I'm going to click on that. 
and I'm going to restart. I've enabled the transcoder. I just need to restart this application really quickly. And you can see by default, um, it's using the transrate template to actually transcode this. So if I come into the transrate template, you can see here I've configured a source, a 360p option, and a 240p option. Now what I want to do is actually, I'm going to click on 240p, and I'm going to enable that preset as well, so we have a couple of additional renditions. Um, and I, I want to actually do a 720p as well, so I'm going to enable that as well. So I'm going to return to the transcoder template. Now I'm pulling in that 1080p source, 720, 360, 240, and 160. I'm going to restart this uh, application so I can apply these changes. And now when I come back into my incoming streams, now I'm pulling in this one high quality feed and I'm transcoding to these multiple renditions directly in here. If I pull this up, I can open up this 240p version. You can see it's a much lower bitrate. I can click on test players and I can view that lower bitrate rendition directly in here. If I actually want to come back in here and pull up 720p, you see this would be a slightly higher bitrate. And I can configure all that inside of my transcoder settings as well. And there you go. And what I'm also doing is by default, I'm actually overlaying this Wowza logo in here. So the next step is I actually want to enable DVR as well. And DVR allows me then to do live pause, rewind of a particular stream. So if I click on NDVR, I'm gonna go ahead and enable this. And the first thing I'll do actually before I enable this is I wanna go ahead and set a particular DVR window. So I'm doing live and DVR streaming. Um, I wanna go ahead and just append this to the DVR feed. Um, and then I wanna use a window duration. I only want this to be, let's say 30 minutes of DVR um, at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. I'm gonna save that. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and enable DVR and now restart this live application. And DVR will now be enabled on this channel as well. So if I come into incoming streams, if I actually, I can actually test this in here. So if I pull in the source and I pull up test players, now I can actually look at it with the Adobe HDS test player. You can see in here, it does have this question mark DVR. That's the parameter that you need inside of the URL to be able to use this feature. So if I click on play, or if I hit start, first of all, now you'll see I can actually live rewind directly in here and it keeps a running log of the DVR that's available inside of this. So the next step is how do I now reference all the different bitrate renditions and, and then also enable the DVR feature and then use that all inside of Wowza Streaming or inside of JW Player. Well, the way to do that is um, we need to use something first called a stream name group. And a stream name group is really just a grouping of different transcodings that are available. So if I come into transcoder and I click on transrate, in here you'll see there is a stream name groups option. If I actually grab the source stream name and then add the un underscore all, it's going to grab all of the source stream names, um, all of the transcodings and adapt to bit rates that are available inside of that particular source stream. So in this instance, I actually, if I come back into my incoming streams, this is called my stream. All I need to do is do my stream underscore all, and I can grab all that. So another article I'm going to reference here is article 304. And in here, um, I have the ability to reference the stream name group. So if I actually search for NGRP, in here it gives me the URLs that I can use um, to be able to reference these name groups. So directly in here, what I'm gonna do is actually use the Apple HLS protocol. It's by far the most popular HTTP protocol for streaming for both live and video on demand streaming. Um, so I'm gonna actually use this Apple HLS URL right here. Now you'll notice that right here, the default name is my stream underscore all, which is actually the same name of the stream that I'm doing. If I was, let's say I named my stream Wirecast, then this would be Wirecast underscore all. But this NGRP, this is the name group that will assemble all of these different adaptive bit rates into this M3U8 or smile file, and it will be done automatically. And then all I need to do is actually just append the question mark DVR at the end of this, and that will give me the ability to not only grab all those adaptive bitrate streams, but also enable the DVR functionality as well. So what I'm gonna do is if I come back in here, I can come into my stream. If I click on test players, 
you can see if I come over here to either Apple HLS or to mobile, the mobile option in here is this iOS Apple HLS URL. So here you can see this is the URL that I can use inside of JW. Now what you will notice is that in here we don't reference the name group though. So I do need to, you know, play with this a little bit and um, make it match the NGRP um, URL that we used inside of that or that we saw inside of that Waza Transcoder article. So what you'll see here is this is the URL that I just grabbed out of Waza Streaming Engine. And if I come back to the support article, here is the syntax for the URL to you reference the stream name group. So if I paste that here, you see all I need to do is actually just add this ngrp colon right here. And then I do need to grab this underscore all. That will reference the, the underscore all name group, which will grab all of those transcodings. And then this question mark DVR will now use the DVR functionality as well. So if I grab this entire URL, that will now give me all of those transcodings that are available inside of my stream for that particular stream name and also enable the DVR. So let me go back over now to JW Player and in here I'm going to go back to I'm going to go back to the quick publish option. So if I click on URL right here inside of quick publish and this is what shows up when you log into your JW Player account, I'm going to paste this URL directly in here and you see here is the IP address of my server, here's my port number, here's the live application name. Here is the name group, the name of the stream, underscore all is the name of the name group, and then this playlist.m3u8 is just the standard syntax for a smile file, and then here is the question mark DVR. So if I click on embed, you can see now that I can change my particular player. So here I have this example player. I want to change that and I actually want to use my Wowza player that I've created, and it's using JW Player 7. And you can see here the ratio is 16 by 9. I'm going to select that. And you'll see what will happen now is over here, if I hover over, I can actually see all of the different renditions that are coming out of Wowza Streaming Engine. I'm going to go ahead and mute this. Now what you'll notice as well is it has six minutes of DVR content available. So I can actually rewind this very quickly inside of the DVR um, and I can actually come back to the live feed. And then I can actually switch this for all of the different renditions. So even if I come down to 240p, You'll see this will switch in just a couple of seconds. The DVR will actually be available inside of each of these renditions, and those all get kept on the server. And then JW and Wowza actually have that integration between the two platforms and the two products um, to be able to deliver this in the player. So what do I do now? How do I actually grab this player and embed it in my own website? Well, very quickly inside of JW player here, I'm gonna go ahead and pause this live stream for now. It gives you a preview page, so if I actually click on this preview page URL, this is going to actually show me what the finished product looks like inside of the page. And you can see automatically it's given me a different rendition, not the full 1080p because of my particular internet connection here. If I do manually want to switch that, I can switch that over to 1080p and it's going to go ahead and switch to a different rendition. And there you go, that wow's a lo extra logo went away. This is the source stream directly in here. Now what you'll notice is that I actually have a Chromecast icon here. So with this particular JW player rendition or, or player that I created, I did enable Chromecast and I can click on this and actually um, uh, cast this over to my particular Chromecast um, device that I have running here in my home office. And then there's the DVR functionality as well. You can switch back and live, live rewind. So very quickly, we've been able to get a live stream up and running. We've been able to en enable the transcoder functionality, the DVR functionality. Um, you can see the incoming streams here in Wowza. And we've been able to enable all of these features and pull those over to JW Player and create a very robust player inside of um, a web page. Now, if I did want to copy this, I could actually come in here. I could copy this JavaScript. I could paste this inside of my own site um, and, and do it that way. JW Player actually gives me an option to do an iframe as well, that if you want to use an iframe, it will put this player inside of it. Now, if you want to do, um, you know, there are actually some more complex scripting options or JavaScript options inside of that. We reference a few of those inside of this article. So if you actually want to come in here and do HLS, um, there are some options here to do multiple sources. So you can do HLS as a primary, but if you're on a device that doesn't support that, it can roll back to RTMP or vice versa. So you can do a lot of advanced features in here to create different sources for different devices to make sure that you meet the compatibility. And Wowza can support you by sending different URLs or different protocols 
um, for those different devices, and then JW Player has the JavaScript and the intelligence to switch between those depending on what device someone happens to be on. So it's a great example of this Works with Wowza partnership between JW Player and Wowza, how you can create really advanced features. There's a lot more you can do. You can also do um, different DRM or digital rights management. You can do security like HTTPS security, um, HLS, AES, 128-bit encryption. We also support Dash, MPEG Dash with both Wowza and JW. Uh, there's a host of other features. Definitely visit our website and you can see some of these additional features in action.